Welcome. My name is David Bombal, CCIE 11023. In this short video, I want to show you how to set up LAN-to-LAN -LAN VPNs using dynamic IP addresses between two Cisco routers. A lot of documentation and people will tell you that this is not possible, but I'm going to demonstrate how to set it up in the next few minutes. So what we're going to cover is look at a network diagram showing the setup of two routers with dynamic IP addresses. We'll look at the requirements for this to work and then I want to give you a demonstration where the VPN is set up between two Cisco routers using dynamic IP addresses. So it's a fairly simple topology. We've got two routers, router 1 and router 2, connected across an IP infrastructure. We're going to set up an IPsec VPN tunnel between router 1 and router 2, but both router 1 and router 2 will have dynamic IP addresses. We're going to have a LAN on the left hand side of 10110, in the demonstration, I'll just represent this as a loopback on the router. And then on the right hand side, we've got another subnet 10120. So we're going to set up an IPsec VPN allowing traffic between these two subnets to be encrypted across an IPsec VPN. Now the requirements for this is firstly, you require two Cisco routers that support IPsec VPNs. So you've got to have the right routers with the right iOS. You need a DNS server or an online DNS server like DynDNS com which the routers can dynamically update with their new IP addresses and lastly you need the VPN config generator or you can configure the VPN manually. In this demonstration I'm going to use the VPN config generator. So in the VPN config generator I'm going to select router, router site to site VPNs. We're using IPsec but in this case we're using IPsec and NAT with dynamic IP addresses on both sides. My diagram once again looks as follows. We have router 1, we're going to encrypt this network 10110, going to this network 10120, which is the inside network on router 2. We are using fully qualified domain names for the routers, so r1.cisco.com and r2.cisco.com. We are using dynamic IP addresses, so notice no IP addresses are displayed in the diagram. Going to our setup, fully qualified domain name of router 1, fully qualified domain name of router 2. We've got the outside and inside interfaces. On our ISA KMP options, I'm just going to leave the password as the default, encryption as the default and so forth, but I'm going to change the lifetime to one hour. You could make this longer or shorter. I'm going to leave everything else as is. So not that many options here. I'm going to select OK to generate the configuration. As you can see here, we have an access list. This access list is used for interesting traffic between our two subnets. This is on router 1. So it's traffic going from 10110 to 10120. We've got a NAT access list. So we're saying the traffic between those two subnets must not be NATed but all other traffic from our inside subnet will be netted. We've got our ISA KMP policies. This is very important. We've specified the same key, firstly allowing any host to connect to us using that key and allowing us to connect to R2 using the same key. We've got a dynamic crypto map configured. We are pointing to that dynamic crypto map. We've got a static crypto map configured for the same host, r2cisco.com. It's important that you put this keyword dynamic at the end. And then lastly, we've bound the crypto map on our outside interface and we've specified which interfaces are inside and outside. A similar kind of configuration would be done on R2. Here's my DNS server. And as you can see, R1 has an IP address of 1.1.1.1. R2 has an IP address of 1.1.1.2. So the A records for these two routers have been configured on the DNS server. Okay, so let's configure our routers. I'm going to start with router 1. So we're going to break out of the initial configuration dialog. And then on fast Ethernet 00, we're going to give it an IP address of 1.1.1.1. .1 .1 .1. 
with a mask and I'm going to no shut the interface. Interface F01, no shut that as well. Give it an IP address of 10.1.1. with a mask. Give the router a name, let's call it R1. Configure default route to R2. Specify the DNS server. And that's our initial configuration on router 1. We'll do something similar on router 2. On fast Ethernet 00, no shut it, given IP address 1.1.1.2. Do the same on F01. And configure a route. To R1. Give it a host name and then lastly specify the DNS server. So that's the basic configuration on the routers. So let's ping our DNS server from both routers. You can see the ping is successful. Now let's see if we can ping the other router. So on router 1, I'm going to ping router 2. As you can see, the DNS resolution is successful and I can ping successfully. On router 2, we have the same result. Now that we've done that, let's set up a VPN. So back on the VPN config generator, on router 1, I can copy the configuration Go into global config mode and paste the configuration on the router. So that's the config for router 1. On router 2, I can do the same thing again. Copy the configuration. Go onto the router. Paste the configuration. And that's done. So on router 1 as an example, let's see if we can ping the inside interface of router 2 from the inside interface of router 1. As you can see there, the ping is successful. Show crypto, I say KMP, SA shows us our security association and you can see that it looks good. Show crypto IPsec SA will show us the number of packets encrypted. In this case, it's nine. Do that ping again. Show crypto IPsec SA shows us that the number of packets encrypted and decrypted has increased. you can see that the numbers have incremented. So on router 2, let's clear the crypto session to pull down all the tunnels. And now if I do the command show crypto ISA KMPSA, you can see it's deleted. Show crypto IPsec SA shows at the moment that there's no packets encrypted and decrypted. But now if I ping 10.1.1.1 with a source of 10.1.2.1, let's see what happens. You can see there that the ping was successful. And here again, show crypto IPsec SA. You can see the packets encrypted, 9. So in this case, 
router 2 initiated the session to router 1, whereas in the previous example, router 1 initiated the session to router 2. In the crypto maps, we are not specifying an IP address, we are specifying a peer host name on both router 1 and on router 2. So router 1 is pointing to router 2 and router 2 is pointing to router 1's fully qualified domain name. So in this video I showed you how to set up IPsec LAN to LAN VPNs using dynamic IP addresses with Cisco routers. Thank you for watching.